spatial analysis and data science capabilities of ArcGIS Pro enable sophisticated problem solving and advanced scientific modeling. This morning, I will explore some of these functionalities to model the movement of plastic debris and its impact on marine animals and coastal health. Plastic pollution in the world's oceans is a global problem that is impacting humans and marine animals alike. The ocean currents you're looking at form areas of swirling movement called gyres where the plastic debris accumulates and creates plastic islands. For this study, I will focus on the Pacific Ocean, where extensive zones of plastic debris accumulation exist. Plastic pollution is hard to detect from satellite imagery, and monitoring the movement of plastics is very cumbersome. Instead, we can simulate the way plastics move in the ocean using an open source Lagrangian um, ocean modeling library that I've integrated into a Python toolbox. This model uses multiple inputs, such as surface winds and ocean currents. And here you're looking at some of the predominant currents used in this model. And here, here is the simulated plastic particles. Now I can explore plastic pollution temporally. Note that plastic debris moves at great speeds, and it starts circling at these gyres. I will use density-based clustering, a spatial machine learning algorithm in Pro to detect statistically significant dense points that correspond to plastic islands. To evaluate the impacts of these plastic islands on marine life, I will look for patterns in marine animal movement with respect to these plastic islands. Here, I have a subset of the animal tracking GPS data set from Animal Telemetry Network. This data set contains a wide variety of GPS signals for a wide variety of marine animals, ranging from sea turtles to marine birds. For every animal, I calculate the distance and the angle that they keep with respect to these plastic islands throughout their movement. I use Pro's multivariate clustering tool which uses the k-means algorithm to define distinct movement behaviors with respect to plastic islands. The resulting box plot shows that there are four distinct movement patterns for all species. The red and the green are loitering around plastic islands, and blue and orange show evading behaviors for animals that try to avoid these plastic islands. I can also investigate movement patterns of a single species. For this purpose, I will choose a long-distance swimmer, the leatherback sea turtle. To study its movement, I need a niche scientific library, and R is a great place for that. Using the R ArcGIS bridge, I create a simple geoprocessing tool that reads in animal GPS tracking data and fits a hidden Marco model to identify the movement patterns of this particular species. Before I feed the data into the tool, I want to make sure that I don't bias my analysis with inconsistencies in my data. Since time is key for the hidden Marco model, I want to explore the GPS signals temporally using the time clock and make selections on time periods where I have more GPS signals. The result of my analysis shows me areas where the leatherback sea turtle demonstrates loitering behavior around plastic islands. These are characterized with extended times of small displacement and high angular changes to their movement. So what, that, what can this mean? This might mean that these letterback sea turtles are either feeding on plastics or they might be caught from plastics from these plastic islands, just like these two letterback sea turtles that were rescued by the Coast Guard. Finally, I will investigate if these plastic islands can impact the health of our coast. For this, I will use coastal ecosystem canaries clams and mussels that filter the seawater and unfortunately ingest materials that they cannot filter out, such as microplastics. 
Toxins in microplastics can cause organ abnormalities in muscles. To find the relationship between environmental factors and muscle organ abnormalities, I will use our new forest-based classification and regression tool. I include rasters as predictors, such as temperature and silicate levels, and I include plastic islands directly as a distance feature. Forest-based classification and regression makes incorporating different types of data very easy. The variable I'm trying to predict, types of abnormalities, have some rare cases. These rare categories can be a problem for random forests. In this tool, I have the option to compensate for sparse categories to create a balanced random forest to build the model incorporating these rare categories. The resulting summary of variable importance shows me that the variability in distance to plastic islands correspond to variability in different type of muscle abnormalities, meaning that there might be impacting muscle health and thus the coastal health. Plastic pro, uh, ArcGIS Pro enables uh, advanced scientific workflows with its powerful analysis and visualization tools and seamless integration. It helps us map the pulse of our planet so that we, we can understand what is at stake and what we can do to help.